Hello, in this short video, we're going to look at how we can estimate tidal heights using something called the rule of twelfths. OK, so the first thing to remember is that this is an estimate. So it will only work in certain parts of the world where we have got tidal ranges which uh, follow a particular pattern. So the first thing we must note is that it only works for us as an estimate when ingress and egress of tide follows a, a sine wave. So here you can see a sine wave. It's basically a mathematical curve with the following the trigonometric um, uh, sine function. So it's a smooth periodic function. OK, so if we look at rule of twelfths here using Wikipedia, we can see rule of twelfths, an approximation to a sine curve. As we just stated, it can be used as rule of thumb, which we also just stated. and um, Basically, what we're doing is we're looking at air. If we look at a location where uh, there are two high tides every 12 hours, two low tides every 12 hours. So in a 24 hour period, you have two high tides and two low tides. Now, in that case where the tidal flow follows the sign pattern uh, and where you don't have anything like maybe a double high water like we sometimes have in the Solent in locations in the Solent we have a stand or double high water or we might have a, a different low water characteristic in those scenarios you can't use this with any degree of reliability but for an estimate where you've got a standard sine curve for your tidal flow then you might want to consider using the rule of twelfths it's very straightforward so basically, if we look at six hours of flood tide, then the first hour of the flood tide would we would estimate to be one twelfth of the total range we're expecting. So if you had a low water of two meters and a high water of 12 meters, then there would be a 10 meter range. So there's 10 meters of tide that we're expecting to arrive over the period to, on the flood. So in the first hour, we would have one twelfth of that amount would arrive. In the second hour, two twelfths of that amount would arrive. So in total, we would have three twelfths or one quarter of the total amount of range due to arrive in that day. This example, then, we've got one twelfth in the first hour, two twelfths in the second hour. That's three twelfths and one quarter. One quarter times a range of 10 meters is two and a half meters of tide plus chart datum gives us total depth in that location, which is what's shown on the chart at that location at that time. And remember, this is a guesstimate. Uh, three, uh, the third hour, we would get three twelfths. So this is as the tide is starting to increase. It's, it's increasing as we go. And then for the fourth hour, three twelfths again. For the fifth hour, it's starting to slow down as it gets towards high water. So it would be two twelfths again. And then for the sixth hour, one twelfth. So you can see what's happening here is the tide starts to flood slowly. It increases and speed increases effectively. It's getting some momentum as it starts to flow in. And then toward the end, when it's getting to high water, the flood slows down. And then the same would happen in reverse for the ebb. So for the first hour of the ebb, you would look at um, a small amount, one twelfth. Then the second hour would be two twelfths. Third hour, three twelfths. Fourth hour, three twelfths. Fifth hour, two twelfths. Sixth hour, one twelfth. OK, so that you if you know what the range for the day is, and as long as you are confident that the tidal curve follows what we said, which was this periodic sine wave, then you can estimate the tide you'll have at any time of day, as long as you know when high water is, when low water is and what the range for the day is. So as you can see here, we've got sine wave for any port with uh, this sort of characteristic. We had a high water. And it goes one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, three twelfths, two twelfths, one twelfth. Then low water, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, three twelfths, two twelfths, one twelfth to high water again. So I hope that um, is clear to you. It is a um, an estimate only. You need to um, you obviously always do better to go to your tidal charts or your tide your almanac and check your tide for the day because that will be more accurate uh, or otherwise use an app you can use apps nowadays which uh, some are um, pretty reliable and uh, useful to use and always remember as well that 
whilst these tidal predictions, um, the apps and the almanacs are pretty accurate, they can also be affected by onshore offshore winds, high pressure or low pressure systems, and therefore you should always allow margin for error. Um, I would suggest that as a bare minimum, you should be looking at a half meter margin of error, maybe a meter or more, dependent on the conditions, the seabed, the type of vessel you're in, and the amount of traffic and the conditions that you're sailing in. So that's something that you need to make a decision on as the skipper on the day. Okay. I hope that was useful to you. We've got plenty more videos like this on our free sailingtutorials.com website, which we're improving all the time and adding to uh, on a uh, weekly basis. Um, we've got more information coming now uh, week by week. We had a bit of a lull over the last few months, so my apologies for that. Um, but we've got more coming on now. If you look at the website, we have refreshed it. Uh, we've got one or two new things on there. Uh, Decky, which um, Decky is a free uh, forum which allows you to share on it just by becoming a free member of the website uh, your details so that you can search for skippers that may be looking for crew and if you're a skipper looking for crew you can put your own details on there and people can contact you through the forum um, so that's the first thing second thing of course is captain's vlog so this is where we pu publish this sort of thing um, and uh, also in written form uh, we've also got uh, forums. So we have three free forums for uh, free members. And um, those are things like basic uh, information on parts of sail, how to sail, how to tack, how to jibe, right the way through to passage planning and tides, uh, which are part of our premium, uh, premium forum. And then finally, we've got uh, videos. So all of the videos that we publish, we keep on this website. And again, we've got plenty of videos in our archive, more at coming all the time. And on top of that, we have premium videos, which we're now um, starting to add. So those are videos where for, uh, say, um, probably as little as 99p, um, you'll get um, a specific video that we consider to be um, have some premium content, um, which we hope you would uh, be prepared to pay for. If you wanted access to all of that, including premium videos and everything else without having to pay any extra, then you can join as a premium member for $4.95 a month, and that can be cancelled at any time. So well, that's my uh, shilling out of the way. Um, the uh, last thing really is just to say that in terms of additional things that I do, obviously I work as a selling instructor. If you wanted one-to-one -one online tutorials via Zoom, or you wanted own boat tuition, then you can give me a buzz or contact me through the website if you're in the UK or if you're doing something further afield. And if you're interested in a micro course, courses that I've been working on now for about 12 months, and I'm hoping that will soon be available. I know a lot of you have registered and are waiting, so my apologies for the delay. But the first one, passage planning and piloted, should be coming very soon this summer. And um, from as little as 34.95, less a 40% discount for people that pre-order with no commitment, um, you gain access for life to a micro course on these topics. So they're micro topics within what would otherwise be a structured learning package provided by one of the national sailing sailing schools or training centers. Okay, I hope that was useful to you and uh, see you again soon. Goodbye.